Hey, what's up, YouTube family? Uh, Hot Base 601 coming at you with a with a video working on T-Bird 5.0. Uh, I wasn't gonna do a video of this. I was just gonna actually um, kind of surprise people and everything, but um, it is time to start working on the outside of T-Bird 5.0. It's been long overdue, but you know, I kind of like been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, just trying to get the system like I wanted. And so far, since I basically done, call myself pretty much friends with the audio, you know, I got my voltage and everything, you know, to a good point. So, and then I was thinking about painting the car first and then going back to put wheels on the car. So, painting the car is not the hardest part that I want to actually master. The problem is this car is four lugs. And the reason why I've been running these wire wheels for so long is because there ain't a whole lot of selections out there for four lug wheels that I like. So my what I've been wanting to do is change it over to five lug, to a five lug bolt pattern. And I search, well, first of all, I went to a couple of guys, junkyards, mechanic shops, and asked them what rear end would go in this car. So many people told me Ford Ranger, so many people told me this, that, Mercury's and all this, 86 Mercury. And I'm like, you know, I'm not gonna go and spend my money on something that I'm not sure about <clears throat> is gonna fit. So I was like, I'm gonna take the easy way out. So back in the day, uh, my cousin had like a, a 89 Mustang hatchback and he put 17 his wheels on it but the wheels was five lugs and he ordered this uh, double stack spacer or double stack adapter should I say and he put those wheels on his car but they kind of they didn't stick out they just kind of was even with the fenders but they wasn't no wide rims so they kind of looked kind of kind of pruning a little bit but I didn't want to go that route so I was I got on eBay and I ordered one set of spacer and it came and it didn't work but it was a single spacer and so I had to send it back so then I got in touch with another guy and he sent me this one right here he sent me this one so this right here is a four to a five little spacer show you how it works this is one two three and I'm gonna show you how this works this is the number four right here get this nut off here and I'll show you how it works here well hang on a second okay I had to put the camera down but this piece right here is threaded in the inside this right here screws on the stud for my car it screws on like that once that once that's in there you know you put this on and you tighten this and when you tighten this to the right it's gonna tighten that to the stud that's in the car already so and that's my five loads right there that's what's gonna give me my five loads so i've already done the back driver side like i said i wasn't gonna do a video of this but i decided to let you that you guys, you know, know every little move that I'm doing with T-Rex 5.0 so y'all can see how hard I be working and, you know, try to bring y'all some type of footage and like of what I'm doing anyway. So, first of all, let's see here. I'm going to start off by, let's hang on for a minute. Okay, so these are, these are 17 by 8 and a half wheels that come off my Mustang. So, I was considering putting these on T-Rex 5.0. And as I put them on there, as every day I was looking at it, you know, just one being on the car, I kind of was like, dang, they look kind of, they look kind of cool, but you know what I'm saying? But like, honestly, I had T-Bird 5.0 since, uh, man, honestly, high school. My brother gave me this car in, uh, shit, like 1994. I was a kid driving this car to school with two 12s on the back seat with a, uh, with a Craig 500 amp and with a Rockford Fallscape. QE2EQ 
And those are my first set of rims right here, McLean's. I got those, I think when I got my first job, my brother helped me guide them and put them on there. And that was probably like, it's uh, 97 maybe when I put my first, first set of rims on T-Bird. But I had two 12s in the car bumping. So later on, I did four 12s in the car. Below the back one, it was a wall, but it was below the back one of four 12s. So from there, uh, after that box, I went all walled up with 415s and a Pat Man, Comp CBRs. But anyway, that's about sound. So I'm going to take you and show you what I have on the car now and what it looks like. Okay, so here we have a SVT 19 by 9.5 inch rim on T-Bird 5.0. It's running a 285, 35, 19. And she is squatting on them. And we're gonna get a view of what's going on back here. She's wired in the ass. So my ideal, I want to go with a straggle, a straggle look. But the but the thing about it, guys, these are not the wheels I'm gonna run. These are my brother wheels that come off his 10 GT500. So he basically let me borrow them just to get my fitment going to make sure everything is gonna clear and everything's gonna work. So we are just in the process of just, you know, like I said, I gotta do the passenger side. And then the front here, let's see. Looks good on that though, y'all. I ain't gonna lie to you. It looks it looks damn sexy. She's sexy on there. But um, and so here's the front right here. So how we're gonna do this? We're gonna actually change the rotors out and the bearings uh in the race in the rotor. So an 86 Grand Marquis and a Lincoln Town Car what I looked up and what I had a shop look up for me. They carry, these cars and those cars carry the same front rotor. So I'm gonna be changing out the rotor on the front to fit these two right here. These are the other two wheels that goes on the front. These right here are 255, 255-40-18s. So 255-40-18s in the front and uh, 285, 35, 19. No, I said 18s. 255, 35, 19s in the front. And 285, 35, 19s in the rear. Both of the rims are nine and a half inch wide. That'll but give me that, my that plane. wide stance I want in the back. Yeah, but I tell you what, once I put my brother wheels all around on this car, she gonna be sexy. I mean, she can roll just like that. But, you know, I understand he don't want to set a stock rim because I still got my 98 stock rims over there. And I've been having 22s in my car for some years. You know, like I, like I tell everybody, you never know what's going to happen. But, but like I said, the rims that I'm going to get, they're going to have a lip out back. They're going to have a lip out back. They're going to have a stainless steel machine lip. So, and that's going to kind of incorporate the, you know, the little chrome that's on the car. So, like I said, guys, I just want to kind of share a little info about what I got going on. Um, real deep fender walls. Well, let me show you, let me show you one thing while I'm, while I'm going straight right now while I'm thinking about it. These front wheels in this car, let's see, they sticks out. Probably can't tell. You can't tell too much, yes you can. See how they sticks out up front? These on the back, flush it's flush let's see let me just get this right or maybe you can tell a bit better all right so they stick out here you see what a fender is there's a tire they stick out in the front I come back here no tire you see how that fender that fender wall is out so that's that's the reason why 
This car deserves um, a striker fit wheel. And that's the reason why I'm trying to deliver and uh, just bring it up to date. So once I master the wheel setup, uh, I'm gonna go back and get this top redone. And once this top redone, then we're gonna look into somebody, um, put some paint on the thing. So hopefully, hopefully by the end of the year, 2020, you know, around the, around the downtime, around fall, I can have it in somebody's shop getting it painted. And I can just take everything out the car, you know what I'm saying? Subs, amps, door speakers, just rip everything out and take it to the shop and just let them have that way with it and, and get me a decent paint job on it. Color-wise, I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided. I'm in between charcoal gray, brandy wine, like a brandy wine, like a burgundy dark burgundy color. And the last, my last option is black. My last option is black. So, but depending on what color I get that top, because that top is gonna be back black. So I just gotta really feel what is what the car look like? Dark charcoal gray with a with a black with a black top or burgundy, like a dark brandy brandy color, brandy pearl, brandy wine, or something like that, with the black top. And that's about it. And I know I need some motel lights. So if anybody watching this video, y'all know somebody that can get some parts for 82 Ford Thunderbird with some tail lights. I mean, please let me know. Uh, that's gonna be the next step, but. Other than that, um, you know, like I said, I did the work to, I did the engine bay a couple of years ago and that, doing that engine bay kind of boosts me up to make the whole car kind of match what's, what it looks like under the hood. But um, that's pretty much it. So once I get started on this right here, I'll show y'all little, little steps of what I'm doing to try to try to get it to work. So until then, we're gonna link this video with the next. All right, guys. Day two. So, we're about to get out here and, and uh, convert the back over on the passenger side. We're gonna try to uh, at least get one of the well, hopefully get the back done because I got to do a lot of grinding back here. So I'm going to take the wheel off and get started. First, I'm going to go ahead and pick my little purple, my little pupper, pupper. Hey, boy. Say hey. Tell him hey. Y'all watch this joker. Come on. Knock me over. Bear. Fat boy. Calm down, dude. Alright, that's enough. See you later. Alright, guys, I got y'all set up. As much as I can, anyway. I'm just taking the loads off. Off this wheel, get this wheel off the car. Just going, I'm gonna record and show y'all much as I can. Cause I got gloves on. I, you know, I'm not gonna be really just touching the camera a whole lot. Just gonna show y'all the basics what I gotta do. Cause I pretty much know because after doing the other side, did the free problems I ran into doing this. Yeah, right, up speakers and car audio anytime you have certain sides to do when you get them done. Then you know how the other side works. All 
right, so let's see here. Get all these off. Screw all these on. Tell y'all my best purchase is that flow jack right there. Y'all can see it. It's not a low pro flow jack, but it gets pretty low. Ready to turn the light on. Turn my outside light on, maybe to help. I'll get these off. This light's right above my head. So it should help out. So the first thing I gotta do, hang on a minute, see, get some light on. So, first thing I gotta do is this space there. Well, the holes is too small to go on my half inch. Like I said, the guy that the guy that built these spaces, he built the space a hole for a three eight stud. So, but I got a half inch stud. So when I go to put them on, see like, it won't completely go on. So I got this drill bit right here. What I did is I just, that, that, I just take a little bit out until I can get it to go on. I just want to get just enough. I don't want to take too much out. So I go back again. Keep doing. So I already got see that those two slides. Let's see. I hate to even get up for my tools out. Oh, this is not Sure. I'm going to drill some more out. Space is good. So, here's my other problem right here. 
Oh, okay, so I have to get my safety glasses. I need some clear safety glasses. Oh goodness. I don't know if I had it right. I got the cutting wheel on here. I had grinding the wheel. That's gonna be my best, but let's see, man, I got my chains out of it. Let's change this around. Yeah. You on this ground, you have to reposition them sometime. So this time I'm gonna be cutting like that, so we'll keep it like that way. See how much we took off. Took off pretty good bit. So I gotta keep doing until I get that space to go flush. I took off a pretty good bit to be the first round. Last time I had a shorter, I had ate my grinding wheel up when it was short I couldn't get off in there real close so we're gonna go another three minutes
see what's up. Oh man, we cooking with Crisco. We are cooking with Crisco. We ain't got much to do. We'll go probably another two rounds on it on this side. And uh, the little nuts to push the rest on, but we're gonna get it on down. Y'all saw that? Smooth as a baby butt. Like see the top of it, see? That's what I want. That's what I want right there. That's what I want. Exactly what I want. Go another round on it. I said a little, let's probably put it in, pull it in, but I'm gonna take off as much as I can. So, when the camera cut off, I never looked up, but we flush. I'm going to I'm gonna do it one more time on this side over here. We're pretty much flush. For some odd reason, 
I lost some footage. I don't know if it was my battery dying in my camera or what, but I lost some footage there. So if I repeat anything, it's because I did not know the camera was recording or not. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna put Loctite on the, the studs. This one, well, this one nut and stud, that's a nut and a stud where the nut goes under the end. It slides in here. I'm not gonna put Loctite on this. I'm gonna put Loctite on all the rest of my nuts that's going on the spacer. Reason being because I might decide I wanna put some uh, brake shoes on the back of this car. And with Loctite on this one, who knows, it might be hard to kind of come out. So, and I'm not gonna really slow this all the way down just that tight. I'm just gonna turn, just turn it. So, I'm trying to figure out how I wanna do this. I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna get this started first, like this. Just to make sure I get it started. This is a good way to tighten it up. I learned this after the fact that I put the other one on. I just want to do this like this first just to make sure the spacer slides on. Let's see. So then I just bag back off the nut. So, then I just bag off, well, I do it that time. Did a minute ago, earlier. Make sure when I torque it down, 
that the spicy get pulled all the way in. Get all them started. Thread locker is what this is. So I guess my battery was low. Cause that camera cut off on me a couple times. Another camera anyway for backup when I'm at shows just in case something just go wrong when I'm in some other vehicle in, in the middle of a demo. Alright, so there's the moment of truth right here. Then wall socket. This one I gotta keep up with. I'm gonna email the guy and ask him, could he send me one more of these since I had to wait on my parts. too quick. I 
I had, yeah, I need two of these. That way I can have a socket already in one hole. Tighten another one. That would be ideal. Be nice to have my needle nose right now, but I don't want to get up. Sliding that got a lot to do with this right here staying tight. Alright, let's put the crisp on that. Gotta tighten them. Diagonally. I'm about to sell impact right to be good right about now, but I don't want to take a chance of stripping nothing out with a damn impact. Alright guys, finishing results. There we go. Ran into a little small problem, but I got to resolve. So like I said, these are two 95s, 35-19s. Uh, I'm not sure if they're nine and a half or 10, but they will strike it on, on my brother's GT500, but it's running the 285 on the front and the 255, 40 on the, on the, uh, the 285, 35 on the rear and a 255, 35 on the front. So you see how wide she is up on there. So that's my, that's my goal. That was my goal. You know, T-Bird, it's T-Bird 5.0. So that's what I've been calling her before I even had a system in it, T-Bird 5.0. So that's why she called T-Bird 5.0 because it's 302 engine. I got turn downs up under here, which I need to get my exhaust redone this time. So we're wide in the rear. Uh, next step, pull that off. And uh, hopefully that'll be easy, man, because I dealt with rotors and bearings and race, taking brake calipers off for years on this car. Because I used to always have like a ruin in this wheel because I ran these wide wheels to mess your bearings up. So I was always packing my wheel bearings with grease and changing them out because the bearings will wide because of the wide rim. So, so taking it apart ain't, is gonna be a piece of cake. But hopefully that when I go to the parts store and tell them I want two front rollers, bearings, and race for like a, I think it was a '96 Grand Marquis Prime Vic 10-inch rotor. All those will fit. So then I can see what type of clearance I'm gonna have on the front with that 19 inch on the front with 255. So like I said, I'm clearing the back good. And I got, I do have air shocks on this car. 
So I got all the air dumped out of the suspension to kind of see if I do want to ride squat it. I mean, I can. I don't see any rub right now, but uh, any potential rub, I got my, my rubber mallet. I can take the wheel back off and just kind of kind of beat the firewall in in the inside. But I know from the outsides of right here, I'm not gonna have any complications. No complications the way it looks. I don't have much bounce, cause like I said, all the ash dropped out. So it's gonna ride, sit down like that. Well, you couldn't see, but it's gonna ride sit down like that. Look at y'all up. I'm through the back. How I look back here. Oh yeah, she's fat, baby. She's fat. T Bird 5.0 living up to her name. Yes, sir. But that's what we're looking like. That's what we're looking like. I love that look. I love it. Alright guys, we're gonna get started on the front.